Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jonathan and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm a first year PhD student at the University of Waterloo. And today we're gonna to be talking about a new app that I discovered this summer that I've been truly loving, Notion. Now Notion is an all-in-one productivity app, but I really found it to be a great tool to help me study more efficiently and effectively. Now studying in 2020 is a lot more different than when I first started university back in 2011. Back in 2011, pen and paper was the norm. You would print out the PowerPoint slides beforehand, bring them to class, and then write your notes on those PowerPoint slides. And when it came to digital note taking, most people just typed up their notes on Microsoft Word or they would open up the slides electronically on PowerPoint and then type in their notes at the bottom bar. But now in 2020, the game has changed. More and more students are using tablets and taking their notes digitally with the Apple Pen. And they are leveraging new and innovative apps to help them study more efficiently and effectively. And Notion is exactly one of those tools that I decided to incorporate into my studying routine. Before I started my PhD program, I actually had to do a couple of undergraduate courses in the summer. I had to take linear algebra and calculus and get a 78 in both courses in order to get admitted into the PhD program. So when I was about to study in the summer, I was looking for what's the best way to study in 2020. And Notion was something that constantly came up as a recommended app to use. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I use Notion to study more efficiently and effectively, what specific features that I really loved about Notion, and give you guys some quick tips and tricks to help you guys get off to the fall 2020 semester in the right direction. I think Notion is a key part in helping me become a better student, um, and it definitely shows in my transcripts. So why don't we quickly hop right into Notion right now, and I can show you guys what I'm talking about. I have Notion opened up right now, and right now we are in my workspace. And as you can see on the left hand side here, this is where we have our different pages and pages are really how you can categorize the different types of things that you want to do with the Notion. So for me, I wanted to have a page for just my school stuff. So I have a U Waterloo folder here where I have all the notes that I would have taken and anything school related in this folder right here. I also have some other folders, for example, for my tax receipts, uh, research notes from the papers that I read, as well as uh, for YouTube. So we're gonna dive into the U Waterloo one now. So you can see that this is what a page will look like on the inside. Every page will have a cover and an icon and Notion provides you with some cool and unique covers and icons that you can use to kind of, I guess, customize your page. So for example, let's say I want this one with a lantern and I want to change my icon to this ant right here. It gives an element of creativity. And on this page, you can then create subsequent pages to further divide how you want to organize your things. So for example, I have one here for fall 2020, which is going to be starting in a couple weeks. And then I grouped all everything else into my previous semesters. So why don't we jump into previous semesters, spring 2020, when I first started using Notion. And the first feature that I want to show you is my deadlines tracker. Obviously, for any kind of student, it's very important to know what kind of assessments that you have coming up and when they're due. Because you want to make sure that you start and try completing them beforehand so you don't have to do any all-nighters. So for here, what I've actually done is taken my page here and customized it to create this sort of chart, kind of similar to an Excel spreadsheet in order to organize exactly all the different types of assignments that I had coming up. So we're just going to go through all the columns here and you're going to see that the first three columns I have are talking about the types of class that I had and then for that particular class, what assignment exactly I have to do. So you can see that I have assignments, mini assignments, uh, there's some projects in here and some exams. And it's good to know exactly what kind of assessment that you have coming up because different types of assessments require different amounts of time. Something as big as a term project, for example, you would want to start maybe two to three weeks in advance in comparison to a mini assignment, which might just take a few hours. And then on the fourth column here, I have due dates. So Notion allows you to set up a reminder to tell you that, hey, you got something coming up. So I'm gonna open up this one right here. I set the due date for May 29th, 2020 at 4 p.m. specifically. So that is just uh, matching whatever deadline my instructor had at the time. And then you can also set a reminder for yourself. So I set it as one day before because this is a lighter assignment that one day notice was all I really needed to make sure that I can complete it on time. And what's great about Notion is that you can get these notifications pushed to you. So Notion is on Mac, Windows, Android, and the iOS app store. So if you download Notion on your onto your phone, these reminders will be pushed to your phone as notifications. So you don't need to worry about not getting these reminders. And then the last column here 
I have is a status column. So what the status column was meant to do was really for me to tell myself, okay, are there any assignments that I started? I have started, but I haven't completed them or I have submitted them. And based on the status that your assignment currently is, you can simply just click on the cell and then change to the appropriate status. And you can also add additional statuses if you want. So for example, I added this complete final check needed. And once you add it, it becomes an option for all the cells in this column to use. Now, here at the end, let me just show you what the different types of things you can do within these cells. So if I click on this arrow here, you can see that there's a property type, and under property type, you have all these different types of options that you can use that cell for. So right now, I have it as a select tool, and what the select tool is that you can create different options, and then you essentially have to select one of those options to fill up that cell. So right now, I have A, I can switch to B, I can switch to C which is what we have here in the status one. Another one I can show you is, let's say I want to change to multi-select. Now, you can select multiple elements that fit that cell, which is a really good tool. I would definitely say that this deadline tracker was really pivotal in my semester because typically when I was in university, you know, in class with all your friends, when it comes to deadlines and things like that, I think just having conversations with your friends, you kind of know what's coming up and what's new. But since I was taking this course on my own online, I had to be on top of all the deadlines myself. So creating this tracker is definitely very helpful. I would say that at the beginning of any semester, you should get all the course outlines that you have for all your courses and just maybe spend a couple hours just building out a very basic structure like this where you have all your classes, the different types of assignments, the due dates, and then a status column. And I think that will be very helpful in helping you stay organized. The next feature I wanna talk about is the toggle feature, which was really instrumental in helping me understand and memorize the material for my classes. So as you can see here, I had a linear algebra class and a calculus class. We're gonna jump into linear algebra. I created a page for each module. Let's jump into the first one. These are the notes that I made for my first module. And one thing you might notice is that the way that I made my notes here might look different from how you might have prepared your notes traditionally. You'll notice that every line is a question. What is R2? What is the vector addition? What is the scalar multiplication? And you might also notice that rather than bullet points, I have these arrows here. And these arrows are the toggle feature. So by clicking on the toggle, it reveals additional information related to the first line. And then if you click the toggle again, it hides it. And you can put a lot within each toggle. You can see here that I have a picture, I got some diagrams, the definition, I added additional bullet points. And then if I click on the toggle again, it hides it. And you can see that I've done that for essentially every heading in this module. Now, I would say that the toggle feature is very powerful because it allows you to create questions and essentially quiz yourself as you review your material. Traditionally, when students make notes, and I've done this too, you write all these notes on paper by hand, and then you typically don't go back to those notes until it is time to study for the midterms or finals. And when that time comes, students typically just reread their notes or they read make the notes thinking that that's a, that's a good way to, I guess, retain the information. But personally, I've never found that really to be effective. I found what's more effective was creating flashcards. And why flashcards were so effective is because you're essentially quizzing yourself and seeing if you remember the material that's being covered in the exams. If there are certain areas that you weren't able to recall, you would set those cards aside and then you would go through those cards additionally and focus your studying on your weak areas. And what Notion essentially has done is taken uh, the benefits of flashcards and put them into this app with the toggle feature. So now when I'm creating my notes, rather than just writing down bullets and bullets and bullets of you know information, I see if I can turn those bullets and information into a type of question. So here we have, you know, what is R2? What is vector addition? What is scalar multiplication? And then within each of those questions, that's where I would put the bulk of the information. So for example, under scalar multiplication, I have here a definition. This is straight out of the textbook that I just simply screenshotted, cropped it, copied and pasted. So we have a formal definition from the textbook. We have additional bullets here. So this is my own interpretation of that definition to help me retain it better. And then last but not least, we also have a diagram to graphically show exactly that the vector is shrinking and stretching when there's a scalar multiple uh, being attached to it. 
So all this information within one question. And then let's say I'm done looking, reviewing this material, I simply close the toggle and then all the information gets hidden away. So it looks very clean on my page, it seems very minimal, but there's a lot of information hidden within each toggle. So what I would do before my final exams is that I would just simply go through each toggle, test myself, check the answers within the toggles, and then hide it away. Let's say there was a certain concept that I wasn't able to recall. Then what I can do is click on these dots over here and then change the color. Let's say I want to change it to orange. So now I've indicated to myself that this particular question, I had trouble recalling the information. And this is important because then the next time I come and review my notes, I'll going to spend more energy on scalar multiplication rather than vector addition. So essentially what we have at the end of reading through the textbooks is all these practice questions for you to do, which is great because now you have a huge advantage over the other students. Other students are typically just writing, you know, regular notes on their page and they only rely on the, you know, maybe five to ten questions that the professor provided, but now you have a whole database full of questions for yourself. What I also like about the toggle feature is that it's great for distinguishing the different types of examples that could be tested for a certain area. So for example, this section focused on subspaces. I have five different examples on whether or not a subset is closed under addition or scalar multiplication. So my first example, this example that it's not. This example is straight out of the textbook. Another different type of example, straight out of the textbook. Example three, not closed under multiplication, straight out of the textbook. All the critical pieces of information from that textbook has been extracted and placed into this condensed notion page. And without this, what I would have done is I would have opened up the textbook, flipped through pages, trying to find the right examples. Obviously the textbook, there's so much more extra convoluted information in there that I might not need for the final exam. So it's just a much slower process doing that than having your own set of master notes that you can rely on time and time again. What's great about having all your notes in Notion is that let's say you want to look for a particular topic. Let's say I go to determinants and I wanted to know about elementary row operations. All I have to do is to control F, elementary row operations, and there, bam, jump straight to the heading. And then all the information that I need is right here. I have a picture of the summary, and then I have six different examples with the question and the solution of elementary row operations. I would say those are the two key features of Notion that I really love in my semester and honestly made a huge impact in my ability to be efficient and study effectively. So hopefully the video showed to you guys some of the cool features that Notion has that makes it an all-in-one productivity tool. Notion was great in my summer semester and I'll definitely be continuing to use it throughout my PhD program. If you guys are interested in learning more about Notion, Definitely recommend you guys look up some other great YouTubers who are giving great tutorials about the application and goes a lot more in depth into the more specific features that Notion has, such as relational databases. If you guys like the video, please hit that thumbs up. Definitely helps the channel a lot. And consider subscribing to the channel if you're into university and studying content. I'll see you guys in the next one.